Hey, I want you to meet one of our clients, Heil Truck Lines, a refrigerated carrier based out of a small town in Iowa. Before working with us, they had around 480 trucks and had a goal of reaching the big 500. They were slowly making their way there, but had to do hundreds of dead end follow up calls every single day to simply get a few drivers hired with only one or two actually being qualified. Now, after working with us at gettruckdrivers.com, for about two years, they now have 530 trucks, 1300 trailers, and consistently hire 30 qualified drivers month over month. And the best part is all of these drivers applications are inbound, meaning no more cold calling and endless follow-ups that lead to nothing. Today, I'm talking with Hannah, the recruiting and marketing manager at Heil Truck Lines to discuss exactly what we implemented to get these types of incredible results how to hire more drivers, how to keep them for longer. Let's get right into it. Yeah, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Cool. Well, just to start off with, can you briefly describe about your trucking business, what you do, your role? Yeah. Um, so my name is Hannah. I am with Heil Truck Lines. Um, I've been here going on six years now. Um, I currently serve as our recruiting and marketing manager. So um, I kind of kind of handle all of the day-to-day um, roles as far as managing our recruiting team. Um, we've got mm-hmm. a couple of processors who work with us as well. Uh, marketing efforts, advertising, all of that jazz. Um, as far as Heil goes, we are a refrigerated carrier um, headquartered okay. in a small town called Akron, Iowa. Um, we've got terminals all over the U.S. and Canada. Um, we're celebrating our 75th anniversary this year. So wow. lots of exciting stuff going on. Um, yeah, but we operate around 530 trucks um, and 1,300 refrigerated trailers. So, um, yeah, it's really the, the main gist about Heil. Wow. Isn't that amazing? 550 trucks, 1,300 trailers. Man, yep. that's a lot of trailers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I visited you, so so I know, like, exactly where you guys are at. And then just knowing and seeing, like, how a family-owned business has grown so much, uh, not just in terms of, like, revenue and growth and and the money that you're making it's also about the people that you employ the the families that you help right that there's Mm -hmm. the whole town like there's a big like a big chunk of the population kind of works for you guys almost for sure yeah we have a pretty large presence in the community um you know like i said being a a very small town we are i think the the largest employer aside from the school the community school here so yeah Mm -hmm. very very large part of the industry in the town so I believe that. Yes. Can you share um, with me where you were before and after working with me or us in terms of revenue growth, amount of trucks, drivers? Sure. Um, so I, I probably won't touch on revenue a whole lot just because that's not my bread and butter. Um, but what I will say prior to working uh, with you, um, we are sitting at roughly 480, 490 trucks. Um, we weren't stagnant by any means, but we had a goal for a while to reach that 500 truck mark. Um, our goal as a, a company is to grow, but very controlled. Um, we never want to bite off more than we can chew. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with or by working with you, we were definitely able to succeed what you know our, our goal was. So. Um, we were working with outside agencies, um, you know, just uh-huh. get, getting those multi-carrier leads sent to us every day. I remember when I first started in recruiting, there were days where, you know, I was making 150, 200 follow-up calls, just just making dead-end calls, leaving voicemails. It was bizarre. Um, and now, I mean, with with all of the direct leads that we're seeing, um, like I said, we're, we were able to, to reach 525, 530 trucks now. Um, definitely growing, but like I said, very controlled and steady, just how we want it to be. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's, it's been incredible to reach our goals and, and even ex- ex- exceed them. Sorry, I can't speak, but even exceed them here in the past few years. So, wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And I know we've known each other for since what, 2021 now. So it's been like three years, right? Mm-hmm. And we work closely for close to almost two years. I think one and a half to two years, if I think roughly um so after working with us for let's say one and a half year or two years um how many drivers would you say on average did you manage to hire just even roughly if you would say 
So I would say we're, we're holding pretty steady at that 30 drivers a month, sometimes more, sometimes a few less. Um, last year, our goal was to hire 300 drivers. Um, mm -hmm. And we actually ended up, um, I believe it was 392 we finished the year with hiring. So yeah, um, we see pretty consistent numbers every month, um, definitely reaching those goals. And it's just day and night difference compared to, you know, prior to, to working with get truck drivers and, and you. So kudos to you guys for, you. yeah, for the, for the process you guys have implemented and, and taught us. Hey, before you keep watching, I have to tell you about something that will help your trucking business. If you are looking to get the results we've been talking about in this interview, I have a program where we help trucking companies hire an extra 15 to 30 qualified drivers every single month without hiring a recruitment agency or using job boards or offering ridiculous sign-on bonuses ever again. If you are a trucking business that has over 10 trucks and are looking to expand, click the link in the description and I'll see you on the other side. Cool, and <clears throat> I'm assuming, well, you kind of said this, but I'm assuming this is like, you know, man, I would just hate making 152. I mean, if I had to, if I was, a, you know, for my own business, I would totally do it, 150 to 200 follow-up calls. It is not easy. It is not fun. It is not very motivating mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, it's, it's, you're kind of gambling almost at that point and hoping you could catch something. For so sure. coming from that world to now, like more people that are trying to chase you and trying to talk to you or drivers that are trying to talk to you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely helped to, um, you know, build our brand awareness as well. Um, you know, prior to 2021 and prior to working with you, if we call the driver and we'd say we were with Heil Truck Lines, you know, they, they didn't recognize the name. We obviously have trucks out on the road, but um, mm -hmm. now they see us on social media. They see our faces everywhere. Um, they, they notice our trucks more on the road. So um, they know exactly who they're talking to. And it, it makes phone calls a lot mm -hmm. more enjoyable too. So Nice. That's yeah. cool. So <clears throat> you touched a little bit on this, but we'll go a little bit deep on it. What were the main challenges you faced before? Did you feel that the only way to grow and get new drivers was to use the job boards or the multi-carrier leads that you were getting in the past? Well, it was all that we knew. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we had been doing for so long. And I, I can't speak a whole lot on this just because I, I hadn't been in the recruiting department very long prior to working with you, probably about nine months or so. Okay. Um, but it was all we knew. Um, and that was really just kind of the thing that everybody did. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, it definitely was a, a challenge and it made things more of a struggle. But uh -huh. again, you know, we didn't know any different from that. Um, so I, I guess that we really, we knew we were struggling, but we didn't know that we were struggling as badly as we were uh -huh. until, you know, we had people actually knocking on our door directly. So. Wow. Yeah. And how has your process changed, would you say, for hiring drivers since working with us? Um, honestly, I think that as far as like our process goes, that has been more of like a, an, an internal thing, internal mm -hmm. decisions that we've made. But um, working with you and getting your insight on, you know, s just simple things that we never thought about, you know, the, the proper way to hire um, and to search for a recruiter or mm -hmm. to search for, you know, just a member of our team here. Um, mm -hmm. And just those little tweaks that we could make to um, follow up processes for, you know, mm -hmm. prospective drivers and, uh -huh. and things like that. Um, we definitely, it, it's not a perfect, perfect process still by any means. There's, mm -hmm. there's always work that can be done. Um, but I mean, you've definitely helped us gain a lot of insight and, and you've grown our knowledge on just those little things to search for um, and, and little updates to our process that we could make, I guess. So um, it's more of a well-oiled machine now, I would say, um, which mm -hmm. has definitely helped us for sure. Very cool. Now, since you kind of mentioned this, like, are you still following like the scorecard, like holding people accountable to it, like, you know, running recruiters through it? And that must have been a foreign term when I first talked about it, right? Yeah, most definitely. Um, and we still kind of keep those items from the scorecard handy and in the back of our mind, but I, I honestly don't follow that, you know, verbatim anymore. 
Um, I know. That's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. Because you're a good P team member that you're not holding them accountable, but they know this is like your North star, right? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we definitely still try to make sure they're being held accountable. Um, just kind of depending on the scenario or the situation that we're in, um, you know, follow-up calls is probably the largest thing that I hold them accountable for, um, making sure that, that they're staying in touch with their drivers and things like that. But, you know, it, it, we really don't have an issue. We have a, we have a great team. Um, I, I really don't know where we'd be without them if, if we don't, if we hadn't had them for the past couple of years. So. And we rebuilt the team with you, right? Like mm -hmm. where we started with the, the, the recruiters that we started to yeah. now what the team looks like, it's completely different. And I was thinking about it this morning. Now, these are things that I internally know, but I, I get a, I got to share this for anybody watching is like you and Caitlin spearheaded the recruiting. You had two more people on your team. Now it opened up so much time for Caitlin in some ways that she's moved on to a different department, giving a hand there and you're running the show here like smoothly and things are still rocking and rolling. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I think when we first started working with you, we had two other recruiters. Um, mm -hmm. and those two are no longer with us. They moved on to, other jobs, which, you know, is normal in life. Um, but not long after we hired two additional recruiters to fill their places and they're still with us. Um, they absolutely kill it. They're rock stars. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have added two processors as well. So um, just kind of handling the back end paperwork and things like that for onboarding drivers and things like that. Um, but yeah. And you guys were doing, <clears throat> now I'm going off tangent, I know, but this is important to know because some fleets that are at your level are trying to be at the same place where you are. They're trying to figure out, I'm like, well, you know, is get truck drivers all about recruiting, which we are, but then also it's, it's about like optimizing those pieces and you didn't have any process, dedicated processors, right? Like you guys were calling, hiring running the paperwork, scheduling the travel accommodation. I'm like, man, that's a time suck. Like you guys are salespeople, just be on the phone and let all this admin work go to dedicated people, right? Yeah, we were we were doing everything. Um, as a recruiter, I mean, we were making the calls, pushing for the application, and then we were processing all of the paperwork, um, which at the time, like it was manageable. I enjoyed being that busy, but you know, anymore, there's no way that our recruiters could make all of the calls to leads and applications that they're working on and process and put together all of the paperwork. I mean, they would, we want them to, to be busy and to be energizer bunnies, but like that would, it, they'd be so jam packed, um, you know, busy every single day that it, it wouldn't be possible. So and it would be productivity suck because if you're good at selling, you should be on the phone selling all the time. Right. You shouldn't be in 10th street trying to do, you know, figure out how to get their MVR when, or their employment record, like the other person needs to get that handoff. Of course, right. it has to be a tight communication, yep. but then you're not leveraging their talent the best way. Right. But now you have, to, would you say, so instead of me talking more here, do you say like <clears throat> working with us that brought that awareness, that system, that process, okay, this is how we're going to do things now, right? Yeah, I would say so. And I, I think a lot of that um, kind of just realization came from, mm -hmm the drastic difference we saw in activity. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we started to notice that we were getting leads like absolute crazy um, compared to what we were getting before, um, we knew that something needed to change. And we went for a while without, you know, having processors. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, a pretty large time frame, I would say, where we still had recruiters processing all of the paperwork, but it didn't mm -hmm. really last very long in the grand scheme of things before mm -hmm. we realized that, yeah, we needed, we needed some help um, on the back side of things. So cool. Can you describe in, you know, the time commitment that was required from your end during our collaboration, what responsibilities did you have and what did we, what did we take care of? Yeah. Um, geez. Sometimes looking back at three years, I have a hard time just because sometimes I remember what I what I did yesterday. But um, yeah, I, I remember initially um, we were meeting weekly and mm -hmm. you guys helped us a lot with setting up our workflows. And I remember setting up like the many chat um, pipelines, things like that. 
Um, but we did put in a lot of work on our own time to um, fine tuning things, um, mm -hmm. building our website. Um, as far as like advertising goes, you you helped us initially set up all of that and, and you were always there for guidance. And um, mm -hmm. once we got past all of that, it was more so meeting to discuss how to how to leverage everything and take it to the next level. Um, so it really kind of depended. Um, I would say for the first few months, so there was there was a pretty heavy time commitment um, just to get everything rolling. And mm -hmm. now, I mean, you know, I, I might spend a few minutes here and there just kind of tweaking <laughs> something if it needs it or updating an advertisement or things like that. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the initial investment um, as far as time goes, was worth it to to get us where we are now so oh thank you yeah. um you know it is <clears throat> it is a lot of grunt work and and when i was saying it to who was i talking to there was a trekking company i we just you know there's tons of people that i'm enrolling on boarding and then one of the trekking companies I, I i spoke to them i was like hey when we ran 101 coaching in the past it was a lot of grunt work and i was saying to them i was like what you what the other companies have went through two years ago, you're probably not going to go through that phase because I was like literally taking a brick by brick and building the house with them. Now mm -hmm. I've kind of like, it's it's like perfected. Now I'm giving you the pre-built house and you're just customizing the pieces, the wall colors and the doors that you want. But the house is pr pretty much built and we're going to pour still a very solid foundation with you so you know where everything is. Now, not to fly off to Pluto, Steve at Pride, he said that he was like, <clears throat> I believe in this model. And then he kind of solidified it for me as a client. And let me know if you feel the same way. I believe that anything that is hard in the front end is going to be easy in the back end. Anything that is easy in the front end is always going to be hard in the back end. If you look in life, anything, right? It's mm -hmm. just a natural fact. So with you guys or anybody that we bring on board, it's like, oh my God, in the beginning, you're building all these funnels and these pipelines and setting up these automations and these workflows and doing these ads and doing things very differently. And you're like, oh my God, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Like we're doing all this work and then boom, it starts working and you're like, holy smokes. And then it takes like very minimal maintenance after that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it was hard in the front end, easier in the back end. Steve said that in a different way at pride similar size fleet as you similar business but they're way more otr he said amrit if it was if it was worth doing and it was good th anything that was like good that is worth doing and is sustainable takes time to build it's not going to get built in one day so mm -hmm. it makes sense why your process is so you know lengthy and like very in depth would you agree or am i just flying off to pluto here yeah, it's funny because you stole the words right out of my mouth. I was going to comment on that. You know, anything, if it was something that was easy, I mean, everybody would be doing it. Um, <laughs> it's it's really that simple. And you're exactly right. Um, and Steve is, I, I should say Steve is right too. You know, um, if, if it's something that is difficult, um, you know, at the beginning, in the end, it's going to be totally worth it. And it's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier or better. Um, and that's anything in life, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. training for, I don't know, an, an athletic event or, um, mm -hmm. you know, financially or whatever the case may be, you know? Right. So. Very cool. Yeah. So based on the results that you've gotten so far or in the past and, and the success that you guys are running with, where do you see the, the fleet or the business in the next six to 12 months from your perspective? Um, well, as we touched on before, things can get, you know, a whole lot better here. First, the, the industry and the market needs to improve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's really tough. We want to continue to grow. We want to continue to, you know, mm -hmm. um, again, controlled. We want to we want controlled growth. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, we we want to make sure that we're doing that in a sustainable way. Um, you know, I have no doubt in my mind that if we wanted to go hire an additional 50 drivers for one of our regional fleets right now, we could do it by the end of the year and, and grow that. But with the way that the industry is right now, um, mm -hmm. we can't, we don't want to. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's difficult to say without knowing 
exactly what will happen in the near future. Um, so the goal is, is to continue growing and to continue doing what we're doing, but um, we need things in, in the industry and in the market to improve before we can. So, yeah, freight rate sucks. We need those, <laughs> but it's it has, to, we have to go through this, this patch yeah. in order to get, you know, the access capacity has to get purged before we can actually see, you know, better, greener pastures really. Cool. For sure. Okay. So were you surprised, this may be a little bit redundant in some ways, but were you su surprised, just so I, it's, it's very clear for anybody watching, were you surprised by the results you got by working with us? I'll be honest, personally, yes. Um, I tend to be kind of a skeptic. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a pessimist, but I just mm -hmm. tend to be more of like a realist. Um, so I, I honestly was, um, I honestly could not wrap my head around in the beginning, how we were all of a sudden <laughs> just going to like have drivers flying at us and, you know, we, we wouldn't know what to do. Um, but in reality, really that kind of is what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I was, um, you know, and, and going back to the time commitment thing too, I don't like to waste my time with things. So um, for a while I was like, okay, when are we going to like, when is this going to start happening? When are we going to, you know, <laughs> like I need results now or I need to get back to work and making phone calls. But um, it, mm -hmm. it wasn't long before we started to see a change and yeah, it, it definitely did surprise me in the best way possible. So. Oh, thank you. Very cool. Yeah. Um, if someone's on the fence about working with us, um, what would you tell them? You know, back to the 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 hard work and everything, you know, if if you truly want to be the best that you can, you know, you've you've got to take a risk. Um, you've got to be willing to put the work in. You've got to be willing to to want to change. Um, and if if you truly want that, then I I don't see why you wouldn't consider it. Um, you know, I, I think it's probably one of the best business decisions that we could have made here recently, especially to to get us to where we wanted to be goal wise. Um, and by working with you, we were able again, we were able to, to meet our goals and, and succeed that. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that it it definitely is something that other companies should consider strongly if, if they want to make a, a change and a difference in their businesses. So. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. the kind words. Any final thoughts you would like to tell the viewers? Ooh, I, I think that this probably goes without saying. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that we didn't, it's not something we didn't know before we started working with you, but it's something that we just started shining more of a light on. Mm -hmm. um, and that is simply, you know, you can have drivers knock on, knocking on your door left and right. You can bring them in, but it's nothing mm -hmm. if you can't keep them. Um, so with hiring drivers and everything, you know, make sure that you're setting yourself and your company in a position to retain them, mm -hmm. um, you know, make them want to be at your company, um, make them want to uh -huh. invite their friends, you know, retention is, is major too. So, you know, even, even though we do see large numbers of applicants and leads and hired drivers and things like that, mm -hmm. um, meeting our goals and things would be absolutely useless if we weren't able to keep them here. Uh -huh. um, so retention is definitely major as well. So interesting. I'm glad that you kind of touched on this point. Um, I remember like when we, pardon me, when we were working first, you know, milestone was to get you guys launched, right? So you can start getting better qualified applications, drivers, warmer conversations. And then I think the second tier to that, that I started honing in on a lot with Caitlin was like, man, we're losing as many drivers on the side, right? So we need to drill on retention, retention, retention. And, and you guys actually did something about it, right? A lot, a lot of people think about it, they talk about it, they chat about it, but very few actually do something about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And retention is something we've always held a very, mm -hmm. quite honestly, a, a very impressive retention rate um, compared to what the industry standard is or the industry uh -huh. averages. 
Um, but it's definitely not something that can't be improved. Um, so in the very beginning, prior to working with you, you know, when a driver was hired, the recruiter was the one following up with them, you know, a couple of weeks after they were hired. And then, you know, a month after that, just kind of checking in, seeing how things were going, seeing if there was any areas for improvement for us as a company. Um, and then after that, Caitlin started making those retention calls, um, again, every couple of weeks and then a month, just kind of checking in again. Um, and then back in September, October of this past year, we did hire a retention manager. Um, so it's, it's really great to just kind of have one specific individual who's almost kind of like a bipartisan, you know, not a recruiter, not in operations. He obviously mm -hmm. works very closely with every single department who is here, but um, he is kind of the the go-to person for a driver who mm -hmm. does have concerns or issues or needs some assistance with something. So that was definitely wow. a, a major move for us um, and has, yeah, definitely been very beneficial. So nice. Yeah. You guys, you have, you were kind of loosely doing it, which served you guys. The freight that you serve retains a lot of the drivers. So both of that kind of kept you in, in good numbers, but in mm -hmm. order to, be able to meet that growth or that target, you really had to drill down into the retention. Now you have a process, right? So it's, it's actually a process, not something we're loosely doing it in the air. Hope we retain drivers. No, we have a process. We follow this. We do the structured calls. There's a dedicated person. We're not winging it anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it, you mm -hmm. know, I've been thinking about this a lot the past probably couple months um, mm -hmm. as I just review job descriptions and things like that. But I think one thing that I hate seeing in a job description is that somebody, you know, they prefer somebody to have the ability to multitask, um, you know, and I think that that is probably one of the worst traits that somebody can have. <laughs> it's not possible to multitask because then you're not focused. You're all to one task that's at hand. So, uh -huh. you know, back when we were handling the processing and the recruiting and mm -hmm cold calls and the retention calls and everything, you know, there, it wasn't an efficient process just because we were handling so many things and couldn't focus on one. Um, so yeah, implementing more people and bringing additional staff onto our team to assist with those things um, has made just the overall process a lot more effective um, because we have people actually mm -hmm. focusing on what they should be so nice very cool yeah. coming into this <clears throat> meeting Hannah ironically like I was working on a module where I talk about the hiring some of the things that I've actually taught you guys like hands-on right like when we went through hiring the recruiting team hiring new recruiters and one of the things that have been a paradigm shift for me personally has been like this is something that it's not like I didn't knew but when somebody said it to me I was like Totally makes sense, right? Like I have mentors that I invest with and I learn consistently. And they said like, great people don't come work for shitty people. So it starts with you, right? So if you have a good business running, you will naturally just attract better people. Now, I got to be cautious because people say that, right? Like trucking companies, we bring on so many great, you guys are a great trucking business. Personally, I believe that because I've seen you firsthand and not just surface level talk. And like, we work very closely. You're doing a lot of things right and very ethically and honestly. So, yes, yeah, so if you have a great business, you will automatically attract great people. You need a marketing strategy to go with it because if you have a cure of the cancer, but nobody knows about that cure, how good is that cure, right? right. Um, but if you do have the marketing and your culture sucks, people are going to come and then they're going to bounce or they're going to see it from a distance that you guys don't know what you're doing. So I think the reason this me me making an assumption or a judgment from a distance is that part of the reason why you've been able to attract talent is because now you're more focused. You're mm -hmm. in, you know what I need to do instead of like, Oh my God, I hope I can hire a driver today or a few drivers today. Right. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, love it. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to share how your experience has been, all the things that you and Heil truck lines have been able to achieve with our help and some of the cool things that you're doing at the business. So I appreciate yeah. you.